the meaning of a Bodhisattva Sutra. Because there is no impediment, he is not afraid, and he leaves the distorted dream thinking far behind. Verse, having no impediments is the true letting go. When fear is no more, the activity obstacles depart. Distortion left far behind. The characteristic of production flourishes. The cause of fine and dust and sand delusions of the dream thoughts become thus. The three obstacles are dissolved. The three virtues perfected. The six faculties are used interchangeably, certifying the attainment of the six psychic powers. When you are capable of this wonderful truth, you yourself enjoy its use. Those who know easily enlighten the dark and difficult path. Commentary If you have no impediments, you will be unafraid. Fearless, you, have, you leave distorted dream thinking far behind. Everything that is distorted and all dream thinking no longer exists. You, your lack of fear indicates that you have eradicated your efficient obstacles. Having no impediments is not at all easy. For instance, I don't think about anything at all except my mother and father. Not bad, that is the way of filial piety. Nonetheless, it is also a kind of impediment. Perhaps you say, I have a friend whom I haven't seen in a long time. Also, I think about him constantly, day in and day out, I don't get to see him. That is also an impediment. In short, whatever you don't let go is an impediment. If you can let go of it, then it isn't one. Therefore, the verse says, having no impediments is the true letting go. One isn't attached to anything at all. I remember that when it was on Lingyan Mountain in Suzhou province in China. I met a monk who had really let go of everything. He did nothing but cultivate dhyana meditation. He was called Da Xiao. What does it mean to let go of everything? I'll tell you. Da Xiao wrote a verse which said, There is no great or small, no inside or out. I cultivate, come to my end and make the arrangements all by myself. What arrangements did he have to make? In a stone wall, he made a hole which was just big enough for one person to sit down in. But then with a slab of rock, he made a stone door, which had iron hinges so that it could be opened and closed. Then all by himself, he sat down inside, closed the door and came to his end. I cultivate, come to my end, and make the arrangements all by myself. He sat down inside, closed the door, and perfected the stillness. He entered Nirvana. He was the true letting go. He hadn't accepted any disciples, so there weren't a lot of troubles and matters either. That is what is called being unimpeded. To have disciples is also to have impediments. Having disciples is a lot of trouble. I don't know how much trouble there will be in the future, but I don't pay any attention because trouble is also not trouble and impediments are also not impediments. Some people may already have been familiar with the story of Da Xiao, but that does not stop me from talking about him. In explaining sutras, you should not be afraid of talking at length. When you first give sutra lectures, you should speak about what you understand, no matter whether others understand or not. If you don't understand, you should say that you don't understand. When you first practice lecturing on sutras, you should put your foot down on the, on the actual ground. When you say one sentence, you should be like a hundred pounds of rocks coming down and making a hole in the ground. Anyone who doesn't want to listen has to anyway. I'm going to put this one sentence in your mind, and your mind will have to accept it. So whether or not people have already heard something, you can always talk about it one more time. You shouldn't steal time from work and scream on materials either. For instance, if a house you are building clearly calls for 8-inch beams, and you say, Oh, it will be alright if I use 4-inch beams, since they are a little cheaper. You are scrimping on materials, 
and perhaps you are supposed to work for 8 hours and you only work for 6. I will just create some confusion about those 2 hours and say that I worked 8. That is to steal time from work. Don't be that way when you lecture on sutras. You must actually do your talking and not pay attention to whether people understand. You should lecture that way when you are just beginning to lecture and also in the future. Do you understand? Further, you shouldn't just explain the principles that, that I tell you to lecture about. Americans talk about the growth of freedom and so you can let your own freedom develop and express yourself according to your own wisdom. Then there can be new and creative developments. That is to be like drama master Tao Sheng. Most other people, when they lectured on the Mahaparinibbana Sutra, said that each Ichanjikas have no Buddha nature and cannot become Buddhas. But Dharma Master Tao Sheng declared, each Ichanjikas have the Buddha nature too, and they can become Buddhas, right? Everyone was opposed, but the ropes nodded their heads in agreement. Thus is the meaning of the saying, not but Tao Sheng spoke, uh, spoke Dharma, and the insensate ropes nodded their heads. Why did they nod their heads? Because he had brought out something new. You shouldn't just follow my road. If I weren't a genuine democratic teacher, I wouldn't allow you to develop your own freedom. You certainly would have to follow after me. If you don't follow me, I'd say, then your road is confused. You are truly evil and in the future you will fall into the hells. But I am not like that. I am for the development of freedom. Because I have now come to America, there is the development of freedom. Everyone has his own free wisdom and I can't cover your wisdom up as if I were putting it in a teacup and not letting it out unless you have no wisdom and are incredibly stupid so that you have nothing new to develop you should be attentive to allowing new developments to come forth any disciple may contribute to this no matter who it is when fear is no more the activity obstacles depart why is there fear because there are activity obstacles comic obstacles when you are no longer afraid there are no longer any comic obstacles. Distortion left far behind. The characteristic of production perishes. We living beings are distorted, Tian Tao, literally upside down. If we are able to separate ourselves from the, the distortion, then the ignorance characterized by production perishes. To cause fine and dust and sand delusions of your dream thoughts become thus. If you are without distortion, then you don't have any dream thoughts. If you are without dream thoughts, then you don't have any cause delusions. Any fine delusions or any dust and sand delusions, everything has merged with the wonderful truth of true thusness. The three obstacles are dissolved. The three virtues perfected. At that time, your three obstacles, the comic obstacles, the retribution obstacle and the affliction obstacle have dissolved. The three virtues which are perfected are the virtue of liberation, the virtue of prana and the virtue of the Dharma body. All three virtues have been fully perfected, perfectly fused. The six faculties are used interchangeably, certifying the attainment of the six psychic powers. If you are able to use the six faculties interchangeably, then in a wonderful manner each of the faculties has a function of all six. That is to say, you have been able to obtain the six psychic powers. The six faculties are the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. In a wonderful manner, each faculty functions in six ways. This is a certification that you have obtained the six psychic powers. At that time, you are able to make use of the power of the heavenly eye, the power of the heavenly ear, the power of, uh, with regard to past lives, the power with regard to the minds of others, the spiritually based psychic powers, and the power of the extinction of outflows. You have been certified as having obtained them all. 
When you are capable of this wonderful truth, you yourself enjoy its use. When you understand this kind of subtle and wonderful truth, your personal experience is benefit. Those who know easily enlighten the dark and difficult path. When you understand, it is easy to awaken to this truth, Tao Li, literally way principle. If you don't understand, then you will be mistaken and take the wrong turn. You will choose the wrong road. Reverence one, an enchanted guy, one who has cut off all good rules and was, and it was considered impossible for such a person to realize Buddhahood. Two, the incomplete Fajian translation of the Mahabharata Nirvana Sutra states that enchanted could not become Buddhas. Later, Tao Sheng was a Vindicated by the arrival of the more complete Dharma Sharma translation, which contained a passage supporting his contention. Nirvana Sutra Ultimately, Nirvana. All Buddhas of the three Buddhas of time attain Anuttara Samyak Samudhi through reliance on Prana Paramita. Verse Virtue is nowhere incomplete, and all the obstacles perish. This final perfect stillness is called Nirvana. Those passed by, not yet come, and now existing. All Buddhas of the three periods of time, rooted in a common source, through reliance on this prana paramita, reach the genuine and equal enlightenment of the supreme immortal. If those who practice are capable, only of diligence and vigor, what worry can there be about not attaining the field of the Dharma nature? Commentary Ultimately, Nirvana, because you have destroyed the retribution obstacle, the karmic obstacle, and the efficient obstacle, distorted dream thinking can be left far behind. If you examine that sentence of the Heart Sutra, you will see that all the living beings of the nine Dharma realms are dreaming. The Bodhisattva dreams of seeking the way of the Buddha above and of transforming living beings below. He wishes to realize the way of the Buddha in order to take living beings across, yet it is all in a dream. The conditioned enlightened, the Pratika Buddhas are also dreaming. About what? The dream of looking out for themselves alone. Living deep in the desolate, desolate mountain valleys, they are a household, comprehend for their own sakes. That is the meaning of looking out for themselves alone. They are incapable of promoting the common good, that is also dreaming. Here is the Shravakas dream of the one-sided emptiness, which is the one-sided truth of Nirvana with residue. The gods have a dream of happiness and peace. They are at ease and enjoy an especially peaceful, superior, and wonderful happiness. People dream of seeking fame and fortune. They wish to make a lot of money or to become officials. In this life, they are all upside down and take suffering to be happiness. Every day they are busy dreaming of fame and fortune. What dream do the Asuras have? They dream of fighting. For instance, it is an Asura situation when someone goes and fights someone else. To be an Asura is to be someone who likes to fight and to be the, in the dream of fighting. Those in the house dream of undergoing bitter suffering. Hungry ghosts dream of starving and animals dream a dream of stupidity. Each of the nine drama realms has its own dream. The Buddha in Ultimate Nirvana is the only one who does not dream, and so he is called Ultimate Nirvana. People who don't understand the Buddha drama say Nirvana is nothing but dying, yet that dying is not the same as death because it is a voluntary dying. It is known and understood. What there was to be done is already done, and pure practice is already established and so you undergo no further existence. Therefore, you wish to enter Nirvana, the state in which there is no birth and death. You yourself know before, beforehand that you are going to enter Nirvana. 
but a certain time I will enter Nirvana and perfect the stillness. Thus, this is dying which is voluntary and understood. It is said to be understood because when you are about to enter Nirvana, you have great clarity. Your body is without sickness or suffering and your mind has no cravings. It is undistorted. There is no greed in your mind for the objects of the five desires, wealth, sex, fame, food, and sleep. You are not greedy for anything, nor do you long for anything, nor is there any distortion in your mind. When you are about to die, your thoughts are not all distorted and unclear. When people who have cultivated want to enter Nirvana, they themselves know it. And they say very clearly to everyone, in a certain year, a certain month and day, at a certain time, I am going to enter Nirvana. Saying it very clearly to everyone is what is meant by knowing. It is not to say that Nirvana is just death. Nirvana is no birth and no death. You are only able to die because you were born. If you hadn't been born, you wouldn't die. Therefore, ultimately Nirvana. What is meant by ultimately Nirvana? Virtual is now is nowhere incomplete and all the obstacles perish. Since there are no obstacles at all, the virtuous nature is fully perfected. The complete lack of obstacles is called perfecting the stillness and it is also called Nirvana. This final perfect stillness is called Nirvana. Perfect stillness is a translation of Nirvana. Perfect refers to merit which is perfect in every particular. Stillness refers to virtual which is everywhere still. Virtual is everywhere still because upon reaching the extreme limit, it merges with the four virtues of Nirvana, permanence, bliss, self, and purity, and thus the ultimate happiness called Nirvana is attained. Those passed by, not yet come, and now existing. It is not only Bodhisattvas who cultivate according to this Dharma door, but also all the Buddhas of the three Buddhas of time, that is, all the Buddhas of the past, present, and future. Therefore, the verse says, All Buddhas of the three Buddhas of time, rooted in a common source. All the Buddhas of the three Buddhas of time, through reliance upon the profound and wonderful prana wisdom, are able to attain a Nuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, the supreme, the genuine, and equal, and the genuine enlightenment. It is supreme in that there is none above it. It is the enlightenment of the Buddha. Genuine and equal enlightenment is the enlightenment of the Bodhisattva. Genuine enlightenment is the enlightenment of those of the two vehicles. The genuinely enlightened are not the same as common people who are unenlightened. Common people do things which are wrong and don't even know that they are wrong. They don't know that they should change that is to be unenlightened. Genuine enlightenment is the attainment of those of the two vehicles, the conditioned enlightened and the hearers. Beings enlightened, they are not the same as common people, but they have not been able to attain the genuine and equal enlightenment of the Bodhisattva way, which consists of the six paramitas and the 10,000 practices for taking oneself across and for taking others across, for benefiting uh, oneself and for benefiting others. Those of the two vehicles are all ahas who comprehend for their own sake. Because they pay attention only to themselves and not to others, they are incapable of genuine and equal enlightenment. Although bodhisattvas attain genuine and equal enlightenment, they have not yet attained the supreme enlightenment. The genuine and equal is equivalent to the enlightenment of the Buddha and refers to the bodhisattvas of equal enlightenment. These bodhisattvas are different from those of the two vehicles because the latter comprehend for their own sake why the bodhisattva benefits himself in order to benefit others. But the bodhisattvas of genuine and equal enlightenment are still incapable of the supreme enlightenment. Only the Buddha is supreme. 
He is called the unsurpassed one, Anuttara, and the human taming Charyotia. Purusada Myasarati, he is said to be the supreme, the genuine and equal, and the genuine enlightenment. The Sutra says, through reliance on Prana Paramita, all the Buddhas of the three Buddhas of time reach the other shore through the use of profound and wonderful Prana wisdom. Through reliance on this Paramita, this verse says, reach the genuine and equal enlightenment of the Supreme Immortal. The Supreme Immortal is the Buddha, who is also referred to as the greatly enlightened Golden Immortal. If those who practice are capable only of diligence and vigor, who you people who cultivate need be capable only of going forward and diligently cultivating without retreating. Don't expose it to the sun for one day and freeze it for ten. Cultivation of the way is the same. You must cultivate every day, cultivate every year, cultivate every month, cultivate every day. Cultivate at all times, at all times be vigorous. Every day be vigorous, every month be vigorous, every year be vigorous, in all places and at all times. It is not that I am vigorous today and tomorrow I retreat. It is not to go one step forward and then backward four steps. You shouldn't be like that. That is not vigor. What worry can there be about not attaining the field of Dharma nature? If you can be vigorous, you can attain the Dharma nature, which is rep represented by a field. Only after you plant things in the field can you have a harvest. You need only be vigorous in blowing and weeding, and then you can harvest. This is the field of the Dharma nature. You cultivate the Dharma body yourself and you, your own nature will be perfected and you will realize Buddhahood, which is like harvesting the field of the Dharma nature. You obtain the fruit. For instance, there is someone who is so vigorous that he does not even sleep at night but cultivates the way instead. He cultivates for one night and then what? He sleeps every day during the day. That too is the same as not cultivating and cannot be said to be vigor. Vigor is not to say, all of you sleep, I won't sleep, I cultivate the way. Then to sleep in the daytime when everyone else is awake. That isn't vigor. Not sleeping at night and sleeping during the day amounts to just the same thing.